my name is Kim Corbin, and I am New World Library's Senior Publicist and Social Media Manager, and the former host of our podcast, New World Now, which hasn't been on the air for a while now. In light of everything that's going on with the COVID crisis, I have been feeling inspired to connect with our authors who are doing such an amazing job helping to see others through this time of crisis with their practices and perspectives and just overall way of looking at the world. And so today, my first guest is Mark Allen, New World Library's publisher and co-founder and the author of many books, including The Magical Path, The Greatest Secret of All, The Millionaire Course, Tantra for the West, the list goes on and on. Hmm. And, um, and I just, I knew he would be a perfect person to start this off. So Mark, thank you so much for being here. Oh, my pleasure, Kim. Thank you for doing this. My pleasure. <laughs> um, so I really, the main, I just watched a video that you did on your Facebook channel about um, how there's in every crisis, there are opportunities. And I would love for you to just share some of that wisdom with us. Yes, yes. Yeah, I heard a bit of an interview with the mayor or whatever they call him in China of the actual town where this thing started. And the little bit I heard, he just said, you know, within the Chinese character for crisis is the character for opportunity. Within every crisis is an opportunity. And I thought, that's great. He's got the right attitude and that, that solves the problem. Yes, we have a crisis. We're all aware of it. We will all do what we need to do. But we can also focus on, we have incredible opportunities here. Incredible. Uh, I loved Eckhart's video too, he did recently on it, where he said, you know, we had all this busyness, all this busyness, people running around all these cities packed, and suddenly somebody just, it's as if somebody turned it all off and said, you have to go on a retreat. You have to stay home. And I love that. I, I, he, <laughs> I loved how he just seemed, because he's been working his whole career to help us come into stillness. And I loved how in that video, he was just yeah. almost perplexed, like, oh my gosh, the whole world has stopped. <laughs> right. And he seemed almost grateful for it. Yes. He, he thought it was a great idea for people to stay home for a while and suddenly have all this time. So, and it's true, it is, it's a wonderful opportunity. I have been doing much more of my lazy meditation flat on my back every day. I've taken walks, I've found a pathway through the woods near my house that I didn't even know existed before. Uh, you know, it's, it is a wonderful opportunity to do all kinds of things and even maybe take the time to step back and look at our lives and see how we like them and see if, if there's something we could do to take some kind of maybe quantum leap forward or some way to really make our lives better and even make the world better. This is a wonderful time to reflect on those things. Yes, and I, I, I also love one of, I know that one of your favorite quotes from Eckhart is about um, offering no resistance, which I will let you share. But I feel like in order to get to that place of opportunity and to embrace the stillness, we have to let go of our resistance to wishing it wasn't so. Yes. So you that, we share that quote with us? I think that is in a way this, a single key. Uh, all of all of my work and all of the power of now, all, a lot of our writers really do give keys, keys, all kinds of keys that are like Zen koans. To, if you reflect on them, they can really change your thinking. They can change your life. And for me, one of the greatest ever all-time keys is from the power of now. I, I told Eckhart, I, I haven't been able to finish the book yet. Because, and I've been, so I've been reading it for 20 years now because I, uh, I got to page 154 in the hardcover and came across the sentence, to offer no resistance to life is to be in a state of grace, ease, and lightness. And that just stopped me. I said, I have to think about this phrase. I have to reflect on it. The next day I picked up the book, read that again, said, I have to think about this. For 18 months, I was on that one quote. I reflected on it every day 
and it became something to really reflect on throughout the entire day. And it's, that is the key. It's the simple key. The problem isn't the world out there whatsoever. The problem is our own internal resistance to what is. We're not accepting what is. It's not right. It's wrong. It should be different. Should. Whenever we use the word should to ourselves or others, that's a huge red flag that you're resisting something. It should be different. It's a very important thing to watch yourself and watch your thought and see if, oh, this, this should be different. This, this is not right. This, this is a problem. It's all our internal thought. And it's true to offer no resistance. If we really do let go of what we think should be, what we let, want our lives to be, and instead just really accept what is this is what is in this moment and once we really do that i love his words grace ease and lightness happen and just even repeating those words to yourself like a little mantra grace ease and lightness actually summons those things into your being you do feel grace like descend from above and then you feel at ease, you realize, oh, that's an internal job. Being at ease is totally internal. It's letting go of stress. Being stressed is totally internal. And we can let go of that stress. We can just let it flow out of our body. We can give it up. We give it up. And the key is not to resist anything, to offer no resistance. We are in a state of ease. So grace and ease Grace comes without, it feels like it comes from, from the universe descending on us almost. Ease comes from within, is what it feels like to me. And then when you have grace and ease, you naturally just feel lightness, the lightness of your being, the mm. incredible lightness of your being. The, the, that one phrase has really lightened my life. Yeah. And, and this is a great segue too of something else I wanted to talk to you about because you're such an advocate for using mantra and prayers all the time. Um, yeah. And it's kind of like if you're, when you're in the practice of doing that during good times, it, they come in even more handy now. So will you tell us about how you use mantra and prayer in your own life? Yes. And it really is during the tough times that it becomes really valuable. During the good times, that's wonderful. But when something happens, some kind of crisis, some kind of problem happens, that's when we can really find some kind of really effective tool that can change our experience of life. Uh, Ecker quoted Epictetus, the Greek philosopher that said, it's not important what happens out there in the world. What's important is how you react to it. And we can completely affect our reaction by finding the right phrase, the right mantra. There's an infinite number of possibilities and keys and different phrases to pick at any given time. We can only think one thought at a time. We change quickly, but if, if we feel all this anxiety, well, if we suddenly really start repeating something like to offer no resist. Oh, even my own anxiety, I, I'm resisting it. I don't want to feel this anxiety. If we accept it, if we really accept, okay, in this moment, I'm feeling anxiety. If we really accept it, we actually awaken a higher level of consciousness that is not identifying with that anxiety. It's observing it. We realize we have this conscious awareness that is a higher level of consciousness than our normal, anxiety-ridden, active mind. And so just finding one little phrase, and I mean, I've used hundreds over the years. Magical Path has hundreds in them. Um, so does the Millionaire Course. Uh, and when I first started Magical Path, I thought it would be a short book because I just wanted to do the simple magical things uh, that have changed my life and taken me from poverty, from a real poverty case in my early 30s, totally broke, totally clueless, to 
a very wealthy person now today. And I look back, what has changed? It is just finding some phrases, finding the right, you can call them affirmations or mantras, or I love uh, Sark. I just did an interview with her. She called them counter statements and even said a really powerful thing to do is to start each counter statement with an actually, the word actually. So I'll give an example. Like I realized in my early 30s when I was totally broke and almost bankrupt and completely stressed out and 65,000 in credit card debt. And this, this was in like the early 80s. So I th in today's dollars, it's probably close to a quarter million. <laughs> you know, I was in deep doo-doo financially. And I realized I did the core belief process that I talk about in my book. So I just realized what I was telling myself. I was saying, I'm a fool with money. I'm out of control. I don't understand it. I'm a fool. That's what I kept telling myself. That's what I was programming my subconscious mind with. Once I realized that, I came up with an affirmation that changed my life. I started, every time I felt this anxiety, I started saying, no, I am sensible and in control of my finances. I am creating total financial success. That was my affirmation. Now, Sark adding the phrase counter statement, I could have said, and it would have been even more effective to start with the word actually, when I felt anxiety to say, no, actually, I am sensible and in control of my finances. I'm creating total financial success. I repeated that several thousand times in my early 30s. And finally, it just became obvious to me, oh, it's easy to be sensible and in control of finances. It's no big mystery. I don't have to be a fool with money just blowing what I have. I can be sensible and in control. And I learned to be sensible and in control. I did a little budget. I'd never had a budget. <laughs> you know, I wrote down, okay, here's my lame income. Here's my expenses. Okay, how do I get those expenses down? And I started budgeting. I, I became sensible and in control of my finances. It became very simple and easy. And I really do think, looking back on it, it was just a matter of repeating that phrase over and over. Are there any um, phrases that you're particularly using now or that you might offer to people in addition to the Eckhart one, which, which we already talked about? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I do a lot of, I think one of the, the best that I do every day many times is every day in every way, I am getting better and better. That's a great one. It has a children's uh, simplicity, a child's simpl every day in every way, I'm getting better and better. And I recently reconnected with a woman I knew in my early 20s, and uh, I hadn't talked to her for 40 years. So I said, well, so what have you been doing the last 40 years? And she said, well, I was kind of like you. I wandered around through my 20s not knowing what to do. And then in her 30s, she just started saying to herself, I do wonderful work in a wonderful way with wonderful people for wonderful pay. She had no job. <laughs> And she had no money. And she started doing, I do wonderful work in a wonderful way with wonderful people for wonderful pay. And she said, after a while, she got this idea to start her own business. And she started a, a, a boutique in Seattle and it grew. And uh, she said, for the last 30 years, she has done wonderful work in a wonderful way with wonderful people for wonderful pay. Mm. It's totally come true in her life. So that's a great one too. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, do you have any um, parting words of perspective or encouragement or wisdom to share to help people who are maybe in resistance right now and struggling? <laughs> yes, this too will pass. Mm. This too will pass. Don't worry. Just be in the moment. And in the moment, it's not so bad right now, right? I mean, this moment for all of us right now is not so bad. If something bad happens, we'll deal with it with our conscious awareness. There's no need to fear what uh, any kind of future might bring because chances are our fears are unfounded. Almost all our fears are completely unfounded. There's nothing to fear. And if some, if some horrible thing happens, we'll just deal with it. 
So yeah, that I really got that from Eckhart's video too. He, yes. he said he said you worry that you you might get sick or or your mm -hmm. loved one might Losing get sick, money. and if that happens, mm -hmm. your presence will help see you through. Yes, exactly. So there really is nothing to fear. Nothing to fear. Thank <laughs> you so much, Mark. Oh, uh, thank you, Kim. It's been fun. Yes. Hang in there. I look forward to seeing you in person again one day soon. Yes, hopefully. that would be nice <laughs> to actually come back in the office. That'll be very nice. It really makes you appreciate the little things. Like I never thought that taking a shower would bring me so much joy uh -huh. or hearing a bird sing. Yes. You know, like I, these things when we're all moving so fast that we don't actually just stop and appreciate like the little things. Like that's something I'm really noticing right now. Yes. Me too. I've been hearing a lot of birds I hadn't heard before. It's true. It's wonderful. Yeah. All right. Well, All right. thank you, Mark. I love you. Oh, and I love you too, Kim. Thank hopefully you. see you soon. Yes. Okay. So be well. Bye.